welcome back. Welcome back. Today we're going to try getting that motor put together today as time allows us to do so. So we're going to go ahead. We already installed the crankshaft and let's get to it and kind of show you what we've done so far. So you can see we went ahead and we installed the crankshaft. Now we made sure that we had a new oil seal on this other side that we did. We stuck our crankshaft in, we brought the piston down to allow the rod to be connected to the crankshaft. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to assemble our end cap. Remember the little bracket here that has a little point at the bottom, that's your splosh bracket. It comes around and it picks up oil and it just throws it around on the inside. So what I want to do is take a little motor oil, put it in here. Right, like so. And we're not going to be running this motor. We're going to be filling it with oil before we turn it around. Slip it in. Start your bolts, your mount bolts. Be careful that you don't cross thread them. Bring it up. Bring the crankshaft around. Uh, let me see. We probably try to get to move that crankshaft a little bit further and I gotta push down on the there we go there we are see you have to make sure that you push your piston down far enough so that the rod falls into the crankshaft or you won't get the end cap on now the bolts will line up and we can go ahead and start those mounting bolts. They're really tough today. I can't believe how tough it's becoming to be. Maybe we need to push that down even further yet. See if we can get it down. Ah. And we need to pull this up so that we're tight in that crankshaft. So now we've got the rod tightened into the crankshaft. Normally you don't have this problem, but this one's a little bit tighter than normal. So we're going to go ahead, put the end cap on again. Wow, this is becoming to be a chore. Here we go, we're starting. There it goes, there it goes. I knew it, I knew it. These little motors, you got to play with them a little bit. They're a little bit fussy once in a while. Just like that. Now, we have the end cap tight. And now the mounting bolts will just go in really easy. Like I say, sometimes you've got to play with these motors a little bit to try to get them to fit just right. Because you have to realize they're just a small, little, delicate piece of machinery. And they need a little bit of love and care once in a while just to try to get them to fit, indeed. So we'll get this all tightened up as far as we can. All right. So now we've got our end cap on. We have our splash plate here facing down. So now as the... Uh, crankshaft rotates, it's going to splash oil up around the mechanisms of the camshaft and uh, all the way around the piston in the piston wall, uh, just making a real storm on the inside. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to torque down those bolts, mounting bolts, to the end cap. And that is set at 200 inch pounds. So I've got myself a 2 inch, 200 inch right here, set up for a torque wrench. And we're going to torque these up. Sit it on like so. Got to hold on a little bit on a nut because it's kind of loose. Okay, let's tighten this one up a little bit. All right, so now we should hear a little click when we got it that far. Oh. One more time here. There, see that? 
This one right here too. Try it again. Make sure it's tight. There we are. We have the end caps torqued in. So now, what do you think we got to do next? We got to bend over these little tabs to lock those bounty bolts in. Remember, they were bent down. That locks it in place. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get ourselves a little bitty hammer like so. I'm going to pick up a little bit of a punch here. And then we're going to come over here. And you see the little tab right there? We're going to hit that like so. And we're going to hit down. Okay, that one's locked in. We'll take this one. And we'll lock this one in. Like so. All right, we've got this tab locked in. I want you to kind of get a closer look at this. I really do. I, I, I know you can't see a whole lot, and I want to get really close up here to show you what I'm talking about. So one of these days, I'm going to get myself a camera in. Anybody out there want to donate their time to me? I sure would appreciate that. But anyway, there is a lock tab right here and right here. This is what we bent over. Now you'll also see an extra one straight out here and here. That is in case your bolt, after you've torqued it down, ends up being in a different position. Now you can use that extra tab and bend it over as well. And you don't have to uh, bend over the one that we just did. So there we are. We have the end cap on. We have it all torqued in at 200 inch pounds. We have the, uh, the uh, brackets plate uh, secured in place. So at this point, now we're going to get to the more critical part of this operation, and that's to make sure everything is timed out perfect. So first of all, we're going to put our two lifters in, and what they do is they ride on the camshaft itself. Let's slip that one in there. Let's slip this one in here. And these go up and down as the camshaft rotates itself on the lobes. They go up and down like that and that's what opens and shuts your valves up above. So the next thing we're gonna do is take our camshaft. Now, oh, there you go, one falls out. Now one thing you wanna make sure is, let me kinda back this off a little bit, there we go. Make sure that this spring here is not broke on your camshaft. It should be like this. That's your pressure release valve that allows your piston to relieve itself as it revolves, rotates itself. So, you want to make sure that you take your camshaft. Now we're going to put that darn lifter back in there again. There we go. All right. Now, the camshaft has a location right here. That's your timing mark. There's a little notch right here, and it's also at the hole. And sometimes you won't see that hole. Sometimes you might find it with the uh, tooth being kind of beveled off one way. That would be a timing mark. But in this case, we got a notch right there. Now you want to make sure that when you install the camshaft that it lines up with this timing mark right here. Now in, on the crankshaft, the tooth is beveled off like so. Not only that, but you're at top dead center on your piston as well. That's important. So there we are. We, we have, we're at the top dead center. We have our timing mark right here. And now we can go ahead and assemble the camshaft, making sure that we have it lined up. We'll stick it in here. Easy does it. It's not, it's kind of a little bit difficult. You gotta get it in place. Make sure that the timing mark lines up with that notch, very important. You kind of ease it in there. It does, there we go, see? Now we've got the timing mark right there. See that? We have the timing mark there, and we have the timing mark there. Now they're both lined up. So now when the 
the crankshaft rotates itself, it rotates the camshaft. And in regards, it rotates it up and down the uh, lifters on those lobes on the crankshaft. So, uh, yeah, there we are. So at this point, we have everything as far as the motor goes installed. So now the next thing we're going to do is put our gasket on real well and we will assemble the other side of that crankcase. Remember the one that we modified and put the tension control on it? That's what we're going to do next. Alrighty, here we are. We have our gasket right here. Make sure that your surface is clean. Don't leave any old gasket laid behind. Get yourself a razor blade. Sh scrape that all off. Well, I know we've got a little bit of paint going on here, but uh, that's not going to hurt it at all. I mean, it's just nice down flat, and that should be okay. Take our gasket here. We have a locator here and here. Locate your gasket or the top of the locators like this, like so. All right. Now we're going to pick up the other end of our assembly. Let me back this off a little bit there. Now you notice you got your governor wheel right here. Make sure that there's nothing wrong with that wheel. All the notches are in good shape. And uh, yeah, we have put a new seal on this side. So the seal's all been replaced. And now we can go ahead and assemble. And this here is your dipstick. I had put that in there because as I was refurbishing it, I put a new O-ring on here as well. We can set that aside. We don't need that in there right now. So now we go ahead and assemble like so. Making sure that you get your crankshaft like so over the top. And I got to say, I wanted to mention one thing about this governor. This governor will run, you notice it's got teeth on here, runs off your camshaft. That's what makes your governor run off the camshaft itself. So now we go over here, make sure gaskets are in place. Now if you're having trouble with that gasket staying in place, you could use a little bit of gasket, but just a little film tight on the surface just to make it stick. But uh, otherwise, take your end assembly, bring it down over the top, like so, wiggle it on. Over your locators, make sure that your oil seal is going down properly. Now, at this point, if that oil seal is causing a problem and it doesn't want to go over quite the way you want it to, you can get yourself a small little screwdriver, like so. And what you do is you run yourself the screwdriver right around the edges of that. We went, we've gone through this once before. Remember, your oil seal is pushed in. That keeps the oil inside the crankshaft and it doesn't come out. So you want to make sure that as you push this on, that you don't collapse that seal. You want that seal to stay in place all the way around, like so, like so. And you keep pushing it on. And it may need a little bit of a tap. Sure that our seal's in place. Yeah, there we are. Now we've got our in part of our motor put together. Now we'll slip it down and we'll start putting in the mounting bolts. So now you can kind of see as we've got the in of the side of the motor put together how that seal comes right out to where it should be nice and flush sealed in that rubber is around the crankshaft facing inward into the crankcase itself now the oil will stay confined to the inside of the motor and that's what we need to do so at this point what we're going to do now is go ahead and assemble the mounting bolts now you've got I went ahead and 
I put a little bit of dash of anti-seize on the bolts because we're, we're screwing into the aluminum casing. And I did notice when I uh, uh, disassembled the uh, motor that these were coming out really hard and it should not have to be that way. But out of all the bolts right here that you have for mounting, there's one long one. This long one here will go right over goes right up here goes right in by where the governor is because it's the longest travel for threads we'll slip that in like so and we'll start it all right the rest of them well you know you know the game going ahead assemble each and every one of these bolts and oh wow it takes it's going to take a little while so why don't I go ahead you know the routine. When we get down to torquing it in, I'll get back to you for sure. So at this point, I've got the motor tipped down through my handy dandy hole, right in the workbench. It works out really great when you can take your motor and stick it right down on one side of the hole, and now it's secured. We're going to be setting these mounting bolts at 100 inch pounds. So what we're going to do is grab a hold of it, like so. Hear that click? Come over here on the opposite side. And come over here. And up here. Oh, got to get around that old crankshaft. Like so. So now we'll complete it. We'll go through here. OK. So now we'll go and go all the way around, make sure that it's all torqued at 100 inch pounds. Here, here, and on the other side here. Come down. We'll get this side. This side, Let's double check. I always like to double check my torquing just to make sure we didn't mess up here. It doesn't take that much time to do that, and you know for sure in your mind, you can sleep at night knowing that I torqued it in right. You don't want to be sitting there at the middle of the night in your sleep and wake up and say, ah, oh, did I torque that or didn't I? Yeah. All right. I got it torqued. We got our engine done there. All right. Looking good. Now, now, let's see. We could, we have to put the valves in and the springs. But, to help us rotate the motor the way we want it to be, instead of trying to fight with it, I think what we should do is put this side of the motor on. So what you see in front of you is kind of old technology that is not really used today. Uh, you'll find this in older models. And what this is, you have a coil, you have a condenser, and you have points inside, breaker points. Let's talk a little bit about that and show you a little bit. We're going to open this up like so. And we're going to move this clip. All right. And when we open this up, you will see right here. These is your points right here. So now what happens is as your flywheel rotates on the inside, you'll see some magnets. What happens is it creates DC current here. This inversely sends the DC current to your condenser. The condenser sends it, it changes it to AC current. That goes to your points. Now as your, your camshaft rotates, your crankshaft rotates, it's got a bevel on it. And what happens is it opens and shuts your points like this. 
back and forth. And by doing that, it sends the AC current back through your wiring in through the wiring that goes to your spark plug. Your spark plug. And that's what gives you your spark on the spark plug. This here is your shutoff wire that goes to your switch that uh, grounds it out. So this is what it's all about. You got your DC, converts it to AC. AC travels through to your points. Your points open shut on the cam and that sends the spark back through the wiring to your spark plug. And that's how that works. So if you do not have spark, then you want to check to make sure that this is not dirty. You may have to get in there with a real fine little cleaning tool that they have for spark condensers like that. Clean it out. And if you still do not have a spark, then it's your bad condenser. Then you're going to have to get a new condenser if you can get one. And uh, I'm sure they're out there, but uh, for me, I would say maybe you should just convert it to the modern technology. But in this case, this is the older technology, and uh, this is self-explanatory how that works. So I hope you understand a little bit about how you uh, make DC, AC to your spark plug. All right, before we go ahead and end this video, there's one more thing I want to do, and that's assemble the coil and a condenser assembly to the crankshaft here. And so what we're going to do, if you notice what I have done, what I like to do before I ever pull this unit off, I like to make sure that I have this in the rotation that it needs to be. And if you look at the bottom, see this, this notch right here? What I like to do is center punch right here where I was before. So then what I need to do is just bring that up until I have that in line, right like that. Then I can tighten it down. I know that I'm in close enough to the flywheel to create the condition that I had before. And the same thing on the top. On the top, you'll see I also center punched it here and center punched it there. So now when I rotate this down, we'll have that in the right position and I can tighten that up. So that is what you want to kind of keep in mind when you go ahead and reassemble the uh, coil and uh, the condenser assembly to the crankshaft. And if you look really close here, I want to show you, right here is the lobe on the crankshaft. And this is what opens and shuts your contacts on here. So uh, I think we've covered quite a bit today indeed. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring these over to the set points and tighten them up. And now we know we're in the right position that we will be when we put the flywheel back on. All right, so there's one more thing I want to talk about. Even though I have set previously a center point to mount this back together again, if you did not have that and you had to adjust it, you want to look at your crankshaft at the highest point of your lobe right here. You have an adjustment right here. Loosen up that screw. You should have anything, when, it, when the contact is open, you should have anywhere from 18 to 20 thousandths in here with a feeler gauge. So that's how you adjust this if you did not have the center uh, points previously set up. But I did, I brought it back to where it was previously and I do have the 18 and 20 thousandths in there. So two ways of doing it. Previously center punch it the way it was and if you had to start from scratch then you would go in and make an adjustment on the high side of your lobe on the crankshaft. It has been a long day indeed. We went ahead, finished up with the inside of the motor. We put the coil and condenser assembly on the outside. We're getting ready now to put the flywheel on and that's what we're gonna start out with our next video. And hopefully we'll be getting at gapping the valves. And uh, it's been a long process, it is. I hope you all are not getting bored with it though. But I'm really trying to go through this motor and kind of really show you what it takes to really do it. And you can do this as well as I can. Don't need all this high-tech equipment, but we can do it. 
And this is what the program's all about, is to help you, help you try to do the work yourself. So, like I said, time is, gets on like it should be, and I just hate that I have to quit all the time, but they only allow me so much time, and uh, by gosh, I gotta cut it off and uh, get on with the next video. And I'm trying to get one out every day if I can, so, Stay tuned for tomorrow because, uh, by gosh, we're going to get back at that motor for sure. So until then, take care of yourself, and I will see you on the next video.